So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Juanito Fatas, and I'm working at Cookware as a ramen specialist. <laughs> and I have a Spanish name, but actually I'm from Taiwan, but live in Tokyo. So recently I became a salary man. So if you can find me in this picture, I can give you a special present after the presentation. <laughs> so I work at uh, Cookpad Global Team, and we have another team is Japan Team, is the biggest monolith of the world. And I work for Global Team. And this slide is made in Japan, so it's trustworthy. You can rely on the <laughs> content. <laughs> and the other day, I was uh, preparing the slides, and I put these slides to you know, think about uh, local jokes. Then the girl uh, behind me just asked me, what is your joke? Then I, I told her, I don't know. I need to think about my joke. So I still don't figure out my joke. So <laughs> I put the slide here. So today I'm here to talk about um, data migration. And so what is uh, data migration? So in Rails, we do uh, schema migration. And the other one is data migration. But the normal migration we talk about is schema migration, which you change the database schemas over time. While the data migration is you translate data from system A to system B. So and there are two types two types of data migration too. One is uh, existing data migration. So for example, Stripe, they need to migrate all their uh, data in the system to a new model. So this is existing data migration. You can check out this talk. And today I'm going to talk about you migrate the external data to your existing system. For example, you buy a company or you need to reload the site for a client. So this is my talk today. And so first, why we need to do uh, data migration? Uh, for example, you uh, convince your client to switch from the great PHP 6 website to Rails or <laughs> other, <laughs> you know? Or you, uh, you have a new partner joining your company. For example, uh, you have your company share the same value and they join your company, so you need to migrate their data to your website. So you need to do uh, some data migration. And there is a simple goal, is to get all data to our system, but it's uh, very hard to achieve, as uh, <laughs> Matt said <laughs> this morning. So the simple goal is to get all the data. We only need to do these four things, and it's very simple. So. The first thing to do is to get the actual data you need to migrate. And there are two ways to get the data. First way is to, uh, if your provider can provide you uh, API, so you can access all the data. Or you can just get the data dump from the uh, database. And Cookpad, we already did uh, many migrations. So if they have developed a resource to build an API, we already have a generic migration code to make all the things happen automatically. So today I'm talking about the migration for data dump, which is uh, impossible to automate. So let's see uh, how to do it. So we can start with a simple rec task. And it's as easy as you just run a Rails command, and hopefully everything <laughs> will be migrated to your system. <laughs> and <laughs> the, the method, you can just put whatever you need to migrate and start to write the code to make it happen. But first, we need to uh, import the data to your system so your my model can connect to the database you want to migrate. And it's as simple as one command that um, you just uh, import to MySQL. But in Cookpad, we support, currently support 62 countries with 30 million users. So our production site has uh, a lot of users 24-7 across every time zone. So we cannot just import a uh, SQL dump because the database will be saturated. It's too fast. So I need to uh, add some delay to the SQL dump. So I'm thinking just add some sleep statement before the <laughs> insert. It, it is true. It is true. 
but uh, the SQL dump file is very huge. I try all the editors below, <laughs> and all the editor doesn't work. Uh, I, I have to use this one called Hex Friend. It can actually edit a few gigabyte files, but it's still not perfect because I may made a mistake. So instead, I write a simple Ruby program, which use this uh, amazing feature. It's called Lazy. That uh, every time you only need to uh, preload 2,000 uh, lines into memory, so it's uh, fast and very easy to use. And one of the friends say, if you want to get better at Ruby programming, you just read about uh, innumerable and read it again. <laughs> so, yeah, so this is how I add a delay to the SQL dump. And so you can just connect to the database through an environment variable, and you set the environment variable accordingly for development and staging and production then you can start to modeling your database. So the data you get from the provider is all kinds of formats, and you just need to map them to your existing system in the case of cookbase, user and recipes, and other things. And with all these five methods from Rails, basically you can model anything. Just these five methods is amazing. And so, Let's see an example to map the data to our current system. So suppose recipe has many steps, and sometimes the data is as easy, you just specify the foreign key and uh, create this one line of code and it automatically works. But sometimes uh, it's as hard as the association is stored as plain HTML in the recipes table. So you need to write some Nogogili parser to pass all the uh, HTML into the association again. So it, it is also not so hard. You just need to write a parser that uh, make all the data uh, align with your current associations. So modeling the database. And we can also uh, set up the test suite for the migration. For example, you just need to tell your test database to run uh, against a different database, and you just require all the files not being re auto re loaded. And in the test, you just require this special helper, and you skip the test on the CI because you may not want to import your confidential uh, valuable data to the CI service. But uh, you may ask, uh, why do we need tests? Because the migration code only used once because uh, we, we can write better code through boring tests, or we can use TDD to get things done. So now you get a test, so you can do the modeling and write tests and repeat this process, so you can uh, model all the data from the provider into your system. So you just, so the PHP side will now work like a real application. Then you can start to do the real migration, and for the migration, you when you need to create a record or update a record, you use all the methods that will raise exception, like save band or update band or create band, because we want to fail fast to find all the errors that could be happen before the real migration happens. So, for example, we can look at uh, how to migrate recipes. So, I have this uh, structure that. I made uh, a lot of migrators, and each migrator in charge of migrate uh, uh, entities. So for example, uh, to migrate a recipe, you just need to uh, write a migrator for recipe, and in the recipe model, you just uh, tell what attributes should be migrate. And in this uh, migrators uh, class, you just find find a, a recipe from the uh, provider data and create a recipe in your current system and just update all the uh, attributes, then it, can, it will uh, migrate to your system. It's uh, very simple. And you just keep implement these migrators and they all respond to the same interface. So I always keep my code uh, simple and stupid because uh, I don't know how to do meta programming. <laughs> uh, 
So, and you just keep at more migrators than your migration is done. But I want to talk about how you ensure data integrity. So the first thing you can do is to wrap all your migration code in transaction. You also make your code a little bit faster because in transaction, there will be less commits to your database. And also you need to make your code uh, ID more potent. <laughs> it's very hard to pronounce. And <laughs> someone put it in a tweet that you do the same thing but produce the same result because we want to run the migration many times but produce the same result. It's like fx equal to fx. So basically you need to uh, have something called upsert is when the uh, record exists, you update. When the record not exists, you insert. And in MySQL or PostgreSQL, you have these two uh, SQL that can do upsert, or you can use this gem. But I keep it simple, just use uh, Simple Rails API to implement it, because we first want to make it right and make it fast later. So this is upsert implementing uh, Simple Rails. And data accuracy, how can we ensure uh, data accuracy? First, I just do some manual check for a uh, few data I migrate, but this doesn't scale, so I uh, think about how to automate all the checks so I can have more time to you know, enjoy, uh, I don't need to work. So, <laughs> for example, you, uh, how, let's see how to check user with most recipes in some simple Ruby code. First, you just uh, uh, loop all the users, has a lot of recipes, and you pass them to a user check object. And in this user check object, you just um, check about the recipes and the draft recipe. Then the recipe checker, it looks like uh, this. So I just check if the recipe from the provider I'm going to migrate, the count is uh, in line with the recipes migrated to Cookpad or not. So, and for the draft part, you just change the uh, method to use draft. You see these two class didn't change uh, much because uh, I always keep it <laughs> simple. So, and the checker just give you a, a log method to recall the information. So you can uh, implement a check like this in some simple Ruby class, and you just keep adding more checkers. Because, for example, you need to check about uh, migrate follows or comments or other entities. So you use many small objects to compose what do you want to do. And I believe uh, everyone's code base should have every everywhere should have a lot of objects. But it, it will become messy very soon, so I recommend you to check about DryRB or RoomRB to for better object design or Trap Laser. So now we can make our code uh, a background job because now we make sure it already works. And for how many worker, for how many CPU cores, then you can have how many workers, and you design your job to. Uh, queue in a different queue so you can distinguish from the <coughs> regular jobs. And the job is, the job is just, you just call another class that will migrate the record and you migrate the record in this class. So, and in the background job, you need to log every unexpected error. So you just, in the base job, add a logger and rescue every error, uh, every possible error, then you can fix it. But I'm not sure if this is good. You can check out the next talk to handle <laughs> the errors better. <laughs> and you need to run your uh, big one jobs against all your data to be migrated then you can find out all the errors and you can fix them before the real migration. And you will also need some tools during the migration, for example, retry mechanism. And in MySQL, 
if you have a foreign key or constraint, when you do an insert or update, it will have locks. And this kind of, and because you have many workers working to migrate data, and they may try to access the same uh, record, so the lock will result in MySQL deadlock. And in Rails, you can just uh, rescue from this exception and automatically let it retry after like two minutes. And so after retry, it will work or it will just retry again. But sometimes, and you need to uh, make sure what you want to retry. So the first time, you don't need to want to rescue everything. You just see what the error is and to understand if this needs to be automatically retry or not. And Rails provide this to API, retry on and discard on. You can do anything you can imagine. You can retry later or just discard an exception or retry is potentially longer. It's only two API and you have everything. So, but sometimes you cannot automatically retry and you need to look at the error in the fail queue. And in rescue, you can implement a simple retry object that can retry a error from, from a, a designated uh, queue. And this retry rescue object just uh, find out all the failures and re enqueue land and remove land so you can retry the errors in the uh, queue you want to retry. So in the migration, you also need to see some status reporting because you want to know uh, how much data you still need to migrate. And you can implement a simple Ruby class called progress and you just loop through all the models and call the progress method on the model. And each progress method on the model is uh, just check uh, uh, how many data you need to migrate and divide it by total data you need to migrate. Then you can know the progress. And you can just wrap another Ruby script to make it report every minute. So you can know the migration prog progress every minute. And you also need to monitor the CPU usage. And in our company, we use Grafana. I'm not sure if you heard about, but this is a good service to monitor your uh, CPU usage or performance and requests. OK, so the next, I want to talk about performance, how to make your migration code run faster. But first, performance is a uh, rabbit hole because I spend so much time. And every change you make to the migration code, you need to run through every record again because you need to make sure it works first. Then you can guarantee um, it is faster. So some performance tip uh, I found is uh, you can preload the associations or you can minimize the scope of transaction. And you can also tune the transaction isolation levels to make it um, faster. And you can also avoid unnecessary callbacks. For example, you create a re user or recipe, and you can just skip the moderation because it is from the migration, you know it doesn't need to be moderate. Or you can use uh, no touching, so the code will not touch the association, so you will be faster. Because you can touch them all after the migration. And another tip is to uh, process multiple records in one uh, single job. And it is also very easy, you just use each slice, and you process 100 users in one job and you will be f faster. And so you, if you process 100 records, and some of the records may be already created, and you can cache them in memory, or later on, I try to cache them in Redis, so it's even faster. And to make it faster, you can also 
migrate the important things first. For example, only migrate the first 100 users, uh, 10,000 users with most recipes. Or, but so migrate the important things first, make your migration code run faster. But later on, I uh, run into a problem is uh, I/O bound. So Ruby is actually super fast. That uh, my database has reached the limit of uh, I/O it can uh, perform. So either I need to scale up the database, or I find out just decrease the workers actually make the uh, I/O bound uh, uh, better. Because if you have too many workers working on the same database, your I/O will uh, soon to fill up. So you instead you decrease the worker. Actually, you can do more than uh, more workers, or you can do uh, something like bug insert or bug upset to uh, insert or upset uh, many records in one go. So every change you make it fast, you need to run the whole migration again. And when you run the migration, you need to look out your CPU usage to keep it uh, at max 75% from my experience. So your site won't uh, went down. And after migration, you can update all the things you need to update, like counter cache or statistics, or you need to touch some associations. And you can also do a redirect, because you want to redirect the old data from the old site to your new site. And first, we do something like we generate uh, redirect tables, and we hand to the provider and they design a redirect programs, and their server start to redirect. But this comes with a cost because the migration provider doesn't always have uh, developers. So recently, we are working on a my redirection service is open source to do uh, these simple things uh, that doesn't require developers from the provider. Okay, so I'm going to share some uh, stories about data migrations i done. For the email, you better remove the duplicate emails before the migration or remove the invalid emails before the migration because it is far more expensive to uh, handle them after you migrate data to your site. And you need to make sure you don't case all the emails because it will cause you a lot of troubles. <laughs> and another story is how to get the site dump. So one of the provider, their site is 100 gigabytes on uh, EC2, and EC2 has a bandwidth limit. So if you do a SCP or async or other things, it will take days that uh, if nothing fail within the days. Uh, or you can you know, buy a more expensive EC2 machine. So the solution was uh, just use DHL to deliver <laughs> in encrypted di disk to Tokyo. It's actually faster than SCP. <laughs> <laughs> and another story is uh, migrate millions of records. So when I need to migrate millions of records, I look into all the solutions. So the first one is active record with transaction, or bug insert or upsert, or faster one, active record import, or even the fastest load data in file is a MySQL command. You can load data in file that is uh, so fast. But it still takes like uh, weeks or one month to migrate all these millions of data. So instead, I think we just need to run this uh, migration in very low priority job. And when the user sign in, we actually migrate their data in a high priority queue. So in this way, I don't need to migrate all the millions of records uh, to our system. We just slowly migrate them. And if they do sign in, we uh, migrate their uh, bookmarks or some other important data. So it's as simple as just check if user need to migrate, then you run this migration in bookmark. So you don't need to migrate millions of data beforehand. You just 
need to migrate and slowly and uh, when user really needs it, you migrate and in a high priority queue. Uh, another story is uh, migrate 100k photos. So first, let's see how our image work. So every time when, when we uh, upload an image, we will generate a unique um, image ID, then use this ID on a CDN to access our photo. So, but this, this process takes like uh, five seconds because uh, all the images from the external site, you need to, you know, uh, open a HTTP connection and upload to your server and generate a unique hash. So this will slow down your migration in very great scale. So instead, I uh, design a way that uh, it always produces the same hash, but yet it's still unique. So in the migration, I only need to set this uh, previously designed hash during the migration, so I don't need to upload the image during the migration. I can upload the images beforehand. Then I may benchmark how long to finish all the image upload. So it's like 10 days, and I just migrate all the data 10 days before in low priority because in the reality, 99% of the photos will not change at all. So you can just do the things beforehand so it won't slow down your uh, migration. And another story is to migrate a user password to uh, secure authentication because uh, their authentication may be like use MD5 or something simple. So first, you need to figure out what, what is the algorithm they use to encrypt the password. And when the migrate user sign in, and they, uh, they enter the password, and you will fail in your system because their password is encrypted in ND5 or something not uh, same as your current system's password encryption. So when, the, when you fail, you fall back to the legacy authentication. And in the code, it looks like this. And when you fail, you just use the legacy authentication to check if they enter the correct password or not. And when they enter the correct password, you just set his password through your existing secure password scheme. So you can uh, make, make their password secure again by doing this simple change. And for the future of data migration, I think if I ever need to down again, I will look into uh, my the data in a ghost table. So I just uh, write into another table. Then when it is ready, I swap the table. Or I will look into make my uh, migration code more generic. So I only need to model all the database, then I can just run the migration and everything will work. I can have more holidays. So some takeaways, uh, Rails provides sharp tools thanks to the Rails core team. And you use small objects to make your code more reliable and maintainable. And my friends say uh, abstraction is the god of programming. And you always remember schedule is more important than fast. And accuracy is more important than schedule. And Data migration is sounds hard, but you, if you keep it simple, it, it can make it easy. Do the simplest thing, as my um, previous boss, Winston, said. And thank you, and enjoy your tea break after my talk. Thank you. <laughs> cool stuff. Do you have any questions about data migration for Juanito? Yes. Hi. Uh, Hi. Have you ever run into a situation where, where you import the data that is not valid under the new system? Ah, yes. So when you run the migration call, you will find a lot of uh, records cannot migrate to your system because you have only validations or their field is too long, this kind of things. So you can either increase, either soft your validation or just uh, 
uh, update them without running these uh, validations, like update column. Uh, and then you just keep invalidating the database? Yes. Mm -hmm. And deal with it later somehow? Hmm? And do you have any um, strategy to deal with it afterwards? Uh, so basically, before the migration, I will run through all the data, make sure everything works. So I didn't have uh, much to do after the migration. OK, thanks. So, <laughs> yeah. Hi. Uh, Whoa. Oh, no. OK, we got two. So I think I noticed a part there where you were migrating data and then conditionally migrating some more data based <laughs> upon the user, like the bookmarks, if the users like wanted that. Yeah. Was that um, all beforehand or was that based upon input like live from the user? So a user finally logs in mm -hmm. and then you, and only then you lazily migrate a different part. And, uh, and, sorry, and just to follow up, and if so, do you see yourself moving more towards that style of migration of mm -hmm. like, Kind of lazily migrating things along? Ah, so in our system, we have some important data, like recipes. So uh, we only migrate the important things first. And things not so important, like uh, bookmarks. And there are many of them. So we migrate this kind of uh, large data in lazy fashion. Yeah, that's uh, how I uh, <laughs> try to <laughs> did it. Uh -huh. Thank you. Right, we have one question here. Hey, um, so how do you how do you manage your foreign keys <laughs> if you've got if you've got users and recipes and you're uploading them in parallel as you were kind of showing? What if you're trying to put a recipe in that doesn't yet have a user that's been created? Ah, so when I migrate a user, no, migrate a recipe. I will actually migrate the user associated first, then migrate the recipes. Um, how, if that's going through parallel ah. thread, mm -hmm. how does the recipe migrator know about the user if it's come from different data, or does it? So uh, every so even if the job is in different workers. Every worker will need to check first if the recipe has a user migrated to our system or not. So we always migrate the user first. So it's kind of uh, more slow, but uh, integrity is uh, secure. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Hey, so do I understand correctly that when you migrate from the old side to the new side, uh, the news, uh, the, there is no downtime. There is like they enable your site immediately, and your data is still not there. You you are you will be loading it, right? Or yeah. there is some scheduled maintenance that the owner of the old site says, "Hey, in a three days we come back." Or how does it look like from user's perspective? Ah, thank you. I didn't cover this. So when the migration happened, we make sure the provider website change to read only. And so everyone cannot sign in, they can just read. And we start the migration on Cookpad, like few hours. Then when we're ready, we shut down the old site and redirect all the things to our new site. So how long usually is this It depends on the size. The short one is like four hours. It can also eight hours. It depends on how much data. Do we have more questions? Right at the back. Uh, sorry, just want to ask, like, um, are there no database tools that allow us to migrate the data? Uh, excuse me, could you say again? Are there no like, database tools do we need to actually create? Um, I think, we, of course, Ruby is a generic language. We can do anything we want. But are there no like, uh, database way to dump the data and import to another database. Uh, so your question is, how does Ruby talk to other database? Uh, no, like, uh, are there any, um, for example, uh, MS SQL or Oracle, right? Uh, they also provide data dumps and uh, data transformation when they uh, to maybe, for example, to import to another database. So um, 
Do you consider using those tools, for example? Ah, you mean use the database tool to do the migration? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I have been considering doing that, but I'm not very good at uh, database tools. So <laughs> I use Ruby, and it still works. <laughs> so uh, yeah, thank you. I think just to add on to that, uh, sometimes you'll need to do some transformations or validations that you do in your Ruby code. Uh, and or maybe the schema that you're, transform you're, you're migrating from is not the same thing. So you need to do some transformation bits that the database tooling doesn't quite support. It depends, yeah. So yeah, I think we can take one more question before I open the break. Uh, one up there, okay. I just want to ask about that, the lazy migration. So when the user logs in, then only you queue them out in a high priority queue to in, uh, migrate the data. So what happens if the user never logs in, so you don't care about the data anymore? Ah, so I actually has a, a low priority queue running for everything. That will take like a few weeks. But if they sign in during these few weeks, their things will be migrated in high priority. So you remove that low priority queue and move them up to the high priority queue? Uh, not. It's duplicated. But oh, it's duplicated. Okay. Yeah, but your migration code is... Uh, it's important, it, yeah. Yeah, it, you can run it multiple times and it's still the same, so no problem. Okay, cool. Thank you very much, Juanito. Uh, thank you.